Hi everyone, your Chess Puzzler here and welcome to the channel. There are quite a number of different tournaments about as we speak. We know about the 2019 FIDE World Cup, but let me tell you, this is not the strongest. The strongest is taking place among the engines of 2019 in the Top Chess Engine Championship of season 16. There are surprises there too. And let me bring up the current standings of the Premier League as per round 35. Right now, Ali Stein is stealing the show, but with so many games to go, a lot can still happen. Please pay attention to column number one, two, three, four, five. Stockfish would have led if it wasn't due to two crashes. In short, there are four engines hovering at the top with four points separating Komodo and Ali. That, in engine terms, is a gigantic difference. I'm moving away from these games, and that's why I've been avoiding them. A 39 move game is doable, but when we're talking about a 196 move game or a 164 move game, these are very hard to follow and for sure not very doable. I may want to come back to cover some super final games when they get to that stage. Okay, back to the tournament where humans matter. We have eight games with five going for 1e4 startups. A game of interest has to be on board four. It's the Nikita Wesley game. And let's see why. This is a game of round four with another one scheduled to be played tomorrow when the player swap sites. So let's see what went on here or what goes on here because the game is still ongoing. Nikita White shot off with 1e4. e5, knight f3, and Wesley is a principled Spanish player. He is expecting a Spanish setup, but how likely is Nikita going to go for something like the Italian? Wesley wanted none of these structures and decided to steer the game into the Russian. So a rather surprising move by Wesley who hardly goes for this type of opening, has far had an influence on Wesley because this is Fabi's territory as much as the Sicilian is for Hemp Beal. D4, going for the modern attack, opening up the game, and normally with an open like this, the game is bound to be very short. Takes, and when Nikita chose to go after the knight, we saw this response. E5 was removed, and now Wesley challenges the knight. I may have forgotten to tell you when that d4 move appeared. Does anyone know what this opening is also known by, other than it being known as the modern attack? Maybe it's time we need to modify the very name of this opening. D4 is also known as the modern Steinish attack. So, how does Steinish fit in? with the word modern. Wilhelm Steinisch was born in 1836, but if we assume he came up with this d4 move in the 1850s or 1860s, how modern is his attack? Okay, back to our game. Knight c3 and some pieces will need to disappear. Takes, takes, takes and takes. And look how fast the ball is clearing. Bishop e7 getting ready to get the king to safety. And before we move on, how do white and black fare in terms of development? Black has only a single pawn. And now the bishop developed. And white has basically the same. So given white has also a double pawn on the c file, black might be slightly better. It's very difficult to assess the situation and this position in particular, but it does look that equal. Castles led to castles and with a straight f4, not f6, but f5, shutting out this ugly looking bishop. 
Nikita knows D4 is forthcoming, so this is what he does. Simply to stop any attempts of getting access to D4. Bishop E6, A4, Queen D7, and Queen F3. And I think a lot of weight will go on how this square on D4 is treated. It's an important outpost, and we know the importance of controlling key squares, key central squares. And they came the rook into the picture, trying to occupy d4. Bishop d4 does not work due to c5. Nikita too got into rook into this line of play. And Wesley in turn rolls out this guy. And d4 is a field that more or less belongs to black. Surprise, surprise. And I say surprise because no one really expects this move Nikita came up with. This is what he did. So what has he got in mind? I can't work it out. Only time would sell. G6. And the game may reach a great lock. Which is in fact a complete opposite of what you would expect of a Russian type of game. H3, Queen C7 is played by Wesley with two aims in mind. One is the obvious C4. But there is a deeper idea here. Can you see it? It's this queen move to a5 to try and get the queen to penetrate right through white's defences. Queen back. In a more chaotic game than this, you will not see. It's not the best, but I don't think the players care. If it brings the result they want, it will be mission accomplished. B6 and Wesley is down on time. He has 47 minutes remaining to that of Nikita's whopping one hour and nine minutes. By the way, we are on move 17 in the game and Wesley will need to pick up the pace. Queen back to base. And this one today is very difficult. Both kings look fine, but who has control of the center? And this is a question and a difficult one to answer to. With Wesley to move, there are ideas of possibly trying to reroute this bishop on e6 to c8 and then get him to hit the diagonal. Once here, taking charge of the light squares, Wesley would love to get his queen in front and try and break through in this way. Maybe far-fetched, but let's see. Nearly six and a half minutes later, with Wesley unable to see something clear, he too goes for a waiting move by pushing his king to the corner two. Bishop back and rook g8, and things are very slow. Bishop back to e2 took another nine and a half minutes of Nikita's time, and this rook moved to g8 by Wesley, four minutes and 15 seconds. Bishop f3, rook a, d8. And things need to speed up. Nikita is down to his last 50 minutes. And Wesley is looking at 36 minutes remaining only. And we have just reached move 20. If the position does not break open, this game might draw. And finally, we have something interesting. Nikita is trying to open up this file. If you take... There is rook a4. Bishop back to attack the rook. Rook back to base. Bishop back to where he came from. Or even bishop here to c6. When the queen returns to f2, if bishop to the corner, there is progress being made. And at least this game opens up with every single move being committed. Where c refused to take and pushed on. And now with this further pawn push, Though d4 is still a critical point, this guy on a6 is dangerously getting close and is getting there too fast. Do you bring in resources and try and eliminate him? Rook d7, a move I can't really understand. And look at how Nikita is trying to capitalize. He went after this pawn. He's trying to create a shockwave. I'm not too sure if 
I can create an effect like this. Let me try, and if it works, that will be fine. And look at this one. I hope the effect looks like a shockwave. Rook back to cover, bishop back to f2, and rook back. It seems Wesley might be in some type of trouble here. Queen e2, adding the pressure on the queen side, and queen into block, and after this will be Manikita, which looks to be spot on. Rook d7. Queen back, and I hope you can see what this does. And now when Wesley went for this relatively rushed rook response, it seems he's slightly panicking because he has just repeated. And right now, all he's trying to do is to get in some moves to make time. Bishop back, targeting b5. And bishop back, protecting b5. And look how the focus has shifted from d4 to another point on the diagram. And we know how important a single pawn difference can be a matter in a game like this. Queen d1 going after a different pawn. And after the queen was repositioned too, Rook a5, and if pawns begin to fall, this might be the break Nikita has been waiting for. King g7, queen to the corner, and Wesley does need to find some tremendously strong moves. He came up with this one, trying to divert attention, and when b5 came off, we saw these trades, and even though f4 came off eventually, all hell is about to break loose. When Nikita got the queen in with this attack, Wesley so no danger removing this guy on e5. And once he did, this is not about c5, but there is far more than meets the eye here. Would you like to guess what Nikita came up with, which is a crushing response? This is up move. And we have an earthquake going on as we speak. I said earlier, Wesley was a long time, but these positions are extremely deep to try and calculate. Guess what? Wesley's down to his last 50 minutes, but Nikita down to his last eight. With four moves to go to reach time control, I don't think anyone is in any real danger when it comes to time. Wesley stuck here and begins to realize removing e5 may have been a big mistake. Wesley knows if the rooks are swapped, he might just resign because a6 cannot be stopped. And guess what? Having spent nearly all his remaining time thinking how to play it, 30 minutes later, he does remove the rook. And with this pawn now at the brink of promotion, if Nikita can figure out what happens after f3 and bishop d6, he has a big chance of winning this game. After a direct f3 to make all this possible, it's all down to the last few moves both players have. Nikita has just under 5 minutes, and Wesley 3 minutes and 22 seconds. Nikita is trying to work out the winning combo. And though he might be winning, he needs to move fast. And finally, he goes for it. He took on f3. And when this bishop move appeared, king g2, the only response. And Wesley is hanging. He's down to his last two minutes and two moves to make time control. A queen check, king f1, and queen takes with a fresh check. And one thing Wesley is extremely resourceful with is finding those perpetuals. With time controls being reached, both get a breather. King e2, and then what checks are possible for now. And most of the attention shifts to this guy on b7. And now black is going to stop him if he can be stopped. Wesley would love to get the queen into h4 to stop the access to d8, but h4 is covered already so, in one word, Wesley has an impossible task ahead. The position is resignable, but Wesley will fight on. 
There are other ideas of queen h2 and bishop g3, but is Nikita going to let him? And he goes for it. In fact, this is easily stoppable because if bishop g3, c5 will come tumbling down and white has it all covered. So even this one doesn't work. With this in mind, a7 came flying off and Nikita is going like a train. I don't think there is anything Wesley can do to remedy the situation. But resigning is not something Wesley does easily. It has to be a matter of time. But should Wesley actually resign? Hell no, why should he? It takes one error by Nikita and Wesley will be right back into the game. If you resign, it's over. If you still play on, you can still have a chance. By the way, Wesley does need to go for a king move here because b8, queen, promotes with a discovered check and it's game over instantly. There is also possible bishop b8 stopping the promotion, but when c5 additionally comes off, you can forget it. All other games, with the exception of the Grishuk Dominguez game, and this one, of course, are still ongoing. I can't really give anything away. Oh, sorry, the Ding Lear and Alexinko game is still being played, but this is all I can say for now. Okay, back to our game. <coughs> And do please forgive me for two things. First is again my voice. And two is the quality of sound from time to time that goes off. There's nothing I can do about it. Let's concentrate on what goes on this game next. Wesley does go for a king move to avoid the discovery. And now with the queen repositioning, pinning this bishop, Wesley got in this subsequent king response. Queen c6 stopping the king from coming west. King d8 and this check. And when the king stepped back, f5. Do you see him? Because now you don't anymore. King back to d8, trying to stop the promotion. And there is no way Nikias can let this one slip. He worked too hard for it to get this far. And there is nothing going to stop him. He knows this and Wesley knows this. King back to the first rank, freeing up the pin on this bishop, of course. And it's all a matter of time now. Let's see what remains. A queen check, a bishop back to block and trust Wesley to mount all the pressure on g1. Queen c8, check, is one way to go about it. But Nikita is taking no chances. Queen g4 is as effective. And once he went for it, when the bishop backed off, the king two made his way out of f1 and up the board. King e7, and this has to be the final blow. Boom, bishop takes, and if you take, this pawn will home in. By now, the Ding Lear and Alexinko game is also out the way. Leaving the Grishik Dominguez and this one going. If there is a way out for Wesley, this is going to be an impossible task. And yet Wesley is not resigning. But I guess this has to be a matter of seconds, if not minutes. Okay, this is how Wesley responded. Not takes, of course, but this queen move. And when Mr. Bishop returned to block this check, h5. But given the circumstances, this was pretty much a tame attack. Queen out of danger, and I don't know if a queen check was better. Got the king back to the eighth. And through this check, and king back to e7, Nikita returns his queen to this spot. King back, and what else is there for Wesley? Got the queen to reposition here. And when Wesley tried it with this pawn, his queen check was as deadly. King fourth to d7. This follow-up check, and I don't know why d5 is still standing. Got Wesley in with this king response. And from here, it was a real dead end for Wesley. This check is now running up to a checkmate. King fourth, and when this pawn transgendered into a brand new beautiful lady, Wesley only now resigned. And this is only two moves short of a checkmate. 
How do you get there? After bishop takes, there is this queen check on c5. When the king is forced back to the rim, queen b4 is that checkmate. And let's finally hear something familiar. Wesley played a very strong game, but Nikita played even a stronger game today, fully deserving this win. Some people are asking if I'm a Wesley fan. This is irrelevant. Nikita played an outstanding strong game and won in the end. I am fully aware Wesley has too many fans across the world and probably a few thumbs down will come my way, but it has to be thumbs up for Nikita who actually surprised Wesley and not the other way around when Wesley tried the Petrov against him. For all Wesley fans, not all is over. One thing for sure, Wesley will need to win tomorrow's game. And with the white pieces, do we expect one heck of a game? And just like everyone else, I can't wait to see it all unfold tomorrow. Until soon, everyone, this is your chess puzzler.